Welcome back. Week 14 NFL recap. So this has an awkward start because Kyler Murray just went down with a non-contact knee injury, it looked like. And uh, of course, when that happens, you fear the worst. So I'll kind of speculate on that for a little bit. But then we'll get into all the games, go through all them, and then talk about the uh, playoff picture and all that type of stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video, the podcast. Leave a like, always helps out, and let's get into it. So with the Kyler Murray thing, I mean, nothing official yet. The game's actually not even a halftime yet, but I'm sure we'll find out tomorrow. But he went down like maybe like the third or fourth play of the entire game, and they brought the card out. It was a non-contact injury, cutting, and um, you definitely fear for a torn ACL there. So hopefully it's not. I don't know what else it could be, of course. I'm not a doctor, but um, when something like that happens, it's you definitely fear for the worst. And if that happens now, it's definitely a rough time because the Cardinals are coming off a pretty disappointing season already being four and eight they could be four and nine after tonight but um you know if they if Kyler was hurt right now there's a chance he might not even be ready for week one next year and luckily for Kyler on a personal level he did sign that big contract extension so at least he got his money but for the Cardinals as a team this is just horrible of course so you just don't want to see that now into the games so we'll start with Thursday night Raiders at Rams it was an awesome game unexpected game we know the story how Baker Mayfield arrived to the Rams on Tuesday. He basically had 48 hours to get ready for this game. And John Wolford actually started this game. He played the first drive for the Rams. I think it was a three and out. And then Baker Mayfield came in and played the rest of the game. And the Raiders, I think at this point, they had won like four, three games in a row. And if they kept winning, there was a chance they could have gotten the playoffs. They had a couple more easy-ish games, but they finished out the year with a couple tough matchups. So... I don't know if they would have made the playoffs anyway, but losing this game definitely put any end to any hopes of making the playoffs in the first place. But the Raiders came in at 5-7, and seven, and they did have a 16-3 lead with like five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And then the Rams have a touchdown drive, Cam Makers scores. The Raiders, they decide to punt the ball on a fourth and inches, basically, on their own 34-yard line with two minutes to go. If they got the first down there on a QB sneak or something, they win the game. So you can question that coaching decision by Josh McDaniels, but I don't blame him. You're giving the ball to Baker Mayfield. It's his first game there. The Rams, to that point, only scored 10 points the entire game. So anyway, they punt it, and the punt goes down to the two-yard line. So A.J. Cole, he pins the Rams offense at the two-yard line. Awesome punt. Baker Mayfield has to go 98 yards in a minute and 45 seconds, and he somehow does it. It just still amazes me how this even happens. I mean, there were some really good throws, one to Ben Skrawanek, and actually, he did get intercepted at one point, Baker, but there was a pass interference or defensive holding and there was a play where Baker got sacked it was a third down play in long so if that's if that sack stood the game probably would have been over but Jerry Tillery who actually just got picked up by the Raiders he was the former Chargers first round pick from I think 2019 or maybe 2020 um, the Raiders just got him and he had this awful like taunting call and it gave the Rams an automatic first down and then Baker Mayfield throws this you know amazing pass to Van Jefferson down the left sideline for a 23 yard touchdown for some odd reason on second and 10 23 yards away from the end zone the Raiders basically go all out blitz and they leave Van Jefferson one on one Baker lays out a nice ball Van catches it and the Rams somehow win that game so it was unbelievable and I'm definitely I'm a Baker Mayfield fan so I'm definitely like I was pumped when it happened, so um, Stafford's out the rest of the year, so it will be the Baker Mayfield show, the remaining, what is it, four games of the year here for the Rams, but it was cool to see that, but definitely a very, very tough loss for the Raiders, who looked like they had something going. Next, we have the Jets at the Bills, and a game that, if you're a Jets fan, you probably want that one back. Buffalo took it 20-12. to I mean, Buffalo had control for pretty much the entire game, but if you're a Jets fan, I feel like you leave that game wanting more, and they should have had more. Um, Michael Carter had a very key fumble in this game with about five, six minutes to go in Bill's territory, so that definitely messed up any momentum the Jets had. And Mike White had to leave this game, I believe, on separate occasions. He took some brutal hits to his rib area. I think it was Matt Milano both times had, like, really just, like, he speared him to the ground. It was, very, it was legal, but very tough hits that Mike White took, but he came back 
back in the game, and ironically, Joe Flacco came in for like one or two plays, and he fumbled in one of those plays and lost the ball. So that was pretty unfortunate for the Jets. But for Buffalo, I mean, they did not really play that great of a game. I mean, their defense did, but the Bills' offense was really not that impressive whatsoever. Stephon Diggs had his worst game of the year. But if you're the Jets now at 7-6, and six, you are in a must-win game versus the um, the Lions. almost said Tigers. <laughs> the Lions next week, which should be a very fun game because the Lions themselves are pretty much in a much win, must win situation the rest of the way so Jets Lions should be a very fun game next week it's it's already a one point spread so the uh, Lions are favorites by a point for Buffalo they continue to be in a good spot of course the Dolphins lost this week so Buffalo kind of just can coast hopefully to this AFC East crown and they're you know the, the Bills are they're a bit concerning right now they did lose uh, Von Miller for the rest of the year it was a torn ACL apparently so he he'll be done but uh, the Bills offense as I said they have not looked right in a while the weather in this game was not ideal it was snowing a bit but still I mean the Bills offense compared to what it was the first two months as compared to now something seems a bit off so hopefully by the time the playoffs come around they can get that figured out the Browns they lost 10 to 23 to the Cincinnati Bengals the Bengals remain a very hot team they have now won five games in a row seven of their past eight their one loss was that random primetime game at Cleveland where they got blown out I still don't know how it happened but it did so the Bengals get their revenge here against this Browns team and look if you're the Browns I mean you're not going anywhere this year but you you do have to rely on Deshaun Watson to be that guy next year it's not going to happen this year I mean Deshaun looked better than he did last week versus his former team the Texans but he still wasn't all that great he was 26 of 42 276 one touchdown one interception um you saw some better throws and some more vintage Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Watson plays but definitely not the same guy we saw in Houston but I did see a stat that he threw his first touchdown in this game in 707 days or maybe 704 days it was a very long time so Deshaun Watson has to get right Joe Burrow still looks very good despite not having Tyler Boyd and T Higgins for this entire game basically so both of those guys got injured Tyler Boyd might miss a couple weeks Higgins has a hamstring injury so that of course can linger for a bit but hopefully he's all right but the uh, the Bengals are still technically in second place in the north but I do think they will pass the Ravens as they continue to barely get by here so the Bengals are in a great spot and they definitely have the tools and the roster to make another deep playoff run so we'll see what happens I just saw T.Y. Hilton sign with the Cowboys I guess I'm late on that I had no idea that happened but good for T.Y. Um, anyway so the Texans were at the Cowboys and this was the game that was supposed to be a blowout I think the Cowboys came in as a 17 point favorite and I'll tell you what this game was very close to being like one of the worst losses in Cowboys history. I mean, this this game came down to an awful fourth down play by the Texans offense. I mean, they got this really, I don't want to say lucky, but they got an interception in Dallas territory because Dak's arm got hit and Tremont Smith intercepted it at the three yard line for Dallas. And you're thinking at that point, like, my goodness, if the Texans scored a touchdown there, I think they would have went up by 10 points. Yeah, if they scored a touchdown there, they would have went up 30 to 20. So that pretty much would have put the game away. They got the ball on the Dallas four, five yard line. They run it with Burkhead for one yard. Jeff Driscoll incomplete pass. Rex Burkhead again, two yard loss. So now you're at a third and one. Dallas one yard line. Houston calls a timeout and you have a chance to either kick the field goal and go up by six with three minutes to go or go for the touchdown and put Dallas away. They decided to go for the touchdown, which actually kind of surprised me because I feel like Lovey Smith has been more of a conservative coach so far, but he decides to go for it and they run like a busted play. I don't know what was supposed to happen, but Jeff Driscoll, I think was running some type of read option play. He looked lost. He ran right into a Cowboys defensive lineman for a loss and the Cowboys got the ball back. They had to go like 97 yards and of course they did it so Dallas with three minutes 20 seconds left got the ball back they worked their way down the field and then of course Ezekiel Elliott had a touchdown with 46 seconds to go putting Dallas up by four and then Dallas's defense with like 40 seconds left had to make another stop but they did but it was just so shocking I mean the Texans really had a chance to win this game they dropped to 111 and one um I don't take too much of this you know I don't take too much away here from Dallas's side I think they j definitely just took this game lightly they definitely fell victim to that but um yeah I think Dallas will be fine but I, I don't know how the Texans hung around they actually had a lot of like dual 
quarterback stuff going on. You saw a lot of Davis Mills, a lot of Jeff Driscoll. Driscoll is actually a pretty fast quarterback. He had seven carries for 36 yards, 5.1 a carry. He also had six pass attempts. Davis Mills had 21 pass attempts. So they used both quarterbacks, and it was actually kind of effective. So maybe they do that going forward. Damian Pierce had a decent game, 22 for 78 and a touchdown. But yeah, I definitely expected Dallas to blow them out. So definitely a good effort there by the uh, Texans. But unfortunately, Dallas, they get that win. They go to 10-3. and three. The Vikings, they took an L here to the Lions, a division match up here in the NFC North and the Lions were favorites in this game and I knew in my mind I should have expected the Lions to you know lay the two points I know they were favored and I was like ah, I don't know if I buy into that the Vikings are still a good team but uh, no the Lions won the game so the Lions I mean I'm not ready to say they're legit but they have a chance to make the playoffs absolutely I mean they started out the year like one in six so I think the Lions they would be the first team actually in history to make the playoffs starting one in six. I mean, it helps having an extra week and it helps having an extra uh, wild card spot now, but it would be very impressive if the Lions pull that off. And as I said, they have a very, you know, not a very, but like a tough matchup at the Jets next week. But after that, it's Carolina, it's Chicago, and it's Green Bay. So if they can get this win versus the Jets, you're looking at a real scenario where the Lions can rattle off their next, you know, four games in a row, win them, and possibly make the playoffs that would get them to 10 and 7 now they've won five of their past six games that one loss in there was the thanksgiving one to buffalo where they lost by three points and they probably should have went to overtime until josh allen made that insane throw to stefan diggs but in this game, we did see Jamison Williams make his first big impact. He had a 41-yard touchdown catch, blown coverage, wide open. And Jared Goff, he was balling. He looked really good. I don't know what it is with Jared Goff at home. Maybe it's the Dome or something like that. But Jared Goff has been awesome at home this year. 27-39, 330 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers, even no sacks. Kirk Cousins, I mean, he looked pretty good statistics-wise. He had 425 yards. I think Justin Jefferson, yeah, he had 11 catches for 223 yards. Jeez. Didn't score a touchdown somehow, but 223 yards, doing it very quietly, tells you all you need to know about Justin Jefferson and how good he is. But yeah, definitely a big win for the Lions. They even have Michael Badgley kicking the ball well. He made a field goal with like 20 seconds left to pretty much put the game out of reach, make it a two-possession game. So Badgley, the former Chargers kicker, is doing a good job. But the Lions... Lions, yeah, it's going to be a great story. If they somehow come back from a 1-6 and six start to make the playoffs, it'd be pretty insane. They hold a tiebreaker with the Giants. That will help them, of course. But we'll find out what happens these last four weeks. The Eagles, they were at my Giants, and it was a embarrassing game for the Giants. They lost 48-22. to um, Giants-Eagles matchups have not gone my way for a very long time now, pretty much ever since I've been a Giants fan. They had that one good year against them. They went 2-0 in 2011 when the Giants won the Super Bowl, but... I just feel like since then, it's been all Eagles. Anyway, no different here. The Eagles go to 12-1. and The Giants fall to 7-5-1. and The Giants are pretty much in a must-win game next week with Washington. They have the same exact record. Washington's technically ahead because they have a division win. The Giants do not have a division win this year. So my takeaways were that, yeah, the Giants, they overachieved the first half of the season. No doubt about it. I can admit that as a Giants fan, but still, I mean, a win's a win, so we're going to take those. And the Eagles are very legit. I mean, they might not be this much better than the Giants, but they're still in a different class right now. 48 points is insane, and, and Philly can beat you in any way possible, whether they want to pass all over you, run all over you, and you know they can play catch up with the offense they have. I mean, it, it's awesome. So if you're a Philly fan, you're in a great spot right now. I think they have the best odds to make it out of the NFC and make it to the Super Bowl, which would make me sick, but they have a great team. I have to give them credit. So they'll coast to the playoffs. Obviously, they have Chicago. They're at Dallas, which could be a big game. Then it's the Saints. Then it's the Giants. So um, the Eagles might be able to rest their players the final two weeks of the year if they win at Dallas week 16 and for the Giants you have four matchups here where you probably have to win at least two of them Washington next week where the Giants are already four and a half point underdogs then you have a game at Minnesota home versus the Colts and at the Eagles where hopefully they are resting their players but the Giants probably have to win two of those games to make the playoffs Ravens at Steelers an absolute snooze fest you miss nothing here but the Ravens they do win 16 to 14 so injuries to both quarterbacks. Mitch Trubisky came in for Kenny Pickett, who after one pass attempt got knocked out with a concussion. It was weird because the play he got a concussion on, it was a similar hit to, not hit, but like a tackle that Tom Brady took when he got that uh, roughing the passer call with Grady Jarrett in the Falcons game. 
And like this hit was a lot worse. I get Kenny Pickett's not Tom Brady. They're not going to be treated the same way. But like I just feel like Kenny Pickett was just thrown to the ground like way worse than Tom Brady was. Anyway, so no call there for roughing the passer. But Mitch Trubisky came in. Trubisky, in typical Trubisky fashion, had three interceptions, kind of threw the game away. I think one of those was in the end zone too, so that's not good. Um, Tyler Huntley started out the game okay, 8 of 12, 88 yards, but he left the game as well with an injury. Anthony Brown, who I never heard of, came in the game. He was 3 of 5. He had 16 yards, so didn't really do too much. The big news was J.K. Dobbins, his first game back in probably like two months. He had 120 yards on 15 carries, a rushing touchdown. The Steelers' offense did just about nothing overall. I mean, Deontay Johnson had 82 yards, so that's good to see, but nobody else did much at all. But if you're Baltimore, you have to get these wins. I mean, it's ugly, but you'll take it. So Baltimore's at 9-4. and four. The Steelers dropped to 5-8. and eight. So Mike Tomlin has to win out in order to go over 500. So this might finally be the year, the first time since 2007, where Mike Tomlin does not get to 500. So that's pretty interesting. But um, the Ravens, I mean, you'll take the win any way you can get it. The Jaguars were at the Titans, and uh, a big win here for Jacksonville, who I cannot figure out. They're such an inconsistent team. I say this every week now, but they win this one 36-22. to and if I remember correctly, the Titans got out to a lead, right? I'm trying to look back right now. The Titans got out to a 14-7 lead. They were up 14-10 as well. They were up 14-13. So they were in a pretty good spot up until halftime. Then Trevor Lawrence found Zay Jones for a 20-yard touchdown where he like barely, and I mean barely, got his feet in. But I had Zay Jones in fantasy, so I was happy about that. But the second half, it was all Jacksonville. They went up 36-14. to Then in the middle of the fourth quarter, Tannehill found... Westbrook Aquina for a two-yard touchdown. Not garbage time, but close enough to it. But uh, Trevor Lawrence looked um, uh, amazing. Like, he's really starting to catch on here, and, you know, national media is starting to pay attention now. 30 of 42, 368, three touchdowns, no turnovers. So Trevor Lawrence, he also had a rushing touchdown as well. Lawrence looked incredible and definitely living up right now to that number one overall pick hype. I mean, Derrick Henry played well. 17 carries, 121 yards, but he did lose two fumbles. So that's not really you know, like Derrick Henry to do that. Um, my former friend, not friend, I don't, I don't know the guy, but Evan Engram, the former Giant, 15 targets, 11 catches, 162 yards, and two touchdowns. I mean, I, I like Evan Engram. He definitely took a lot of crap from the Giants fan base, and sometimes it was deserving. But still, Evan Engram, I'm happy for him. He's definitely having a really good year. So, um, you know, shout out to Evan Engram. But Jacksonville now, they find themselves at 5-8, and eight, and the Titans are 7-6. and six. So... Yeah, there's still like two games back here, but there is a chance, you know what I mean? Like Jacksonville, they have a pretty tough end to the season. They're at the Cow I know no, they're home versus the Cowboys. Sorry. So they're home versus the Cowboys, but they're four and a half point underdogs. Then they're at the Jets. That's also a pretty tough game. At the Texans, which they should win, you would think. I think they lost to them this year, actually. But anyway, they should win that game. Then they finish out with the Titans at home. So, you know, if they can somehow keep winning, I mean, there, there's a chance they can maybe get um, the AFC South crown. But the Titans pretty much just have to win their next, like, two out of four games. And in those games, they play the Chargers, the Texans, the Cowboys, and then the Jaguars, of course. So, yeah, it might come down to the final week or something. We'll see. That might be a fun matchup. And, of course, the Jaguars right now hold the tiebreaker. So, hopefully, you know, coming into the last week of the season, we can see these teams play for the AFC South. The Chiefs, they were at the Broncos. And it looked like one of those games where if you're a Broncos fan, you might as well leave at halftime. But I hope you didn't because it actually got kind of good at the end. So it started out 27 to nothing in favor of the Chiefs, and it just looked like a complete laugher. Uh, Willie Gay had a pick six on Russell Wilson. It was a great play where he basically just jumped as high as he could, tipped the ball to himself, and took it back. He stiff-armed Russell Wilson to the ground, so very cool pick six there. Um, Jarek McKinnon was going crazy in this game. He had a 56-yard touchdown. If you did not see that Patrick Mahomes pass, by the way, on that touchdown, go back and watch it. It was one of those like ridiculous Mahomes passes that only he would attempt and somehow it got there and McKinnon had the entire field to himself and he scored but like I don't know how Patrick Mahomes got that pass off he basically sidearmed it and just got it to McKinnon so it made no sense but anyway the Broncos they responded after going down 27 nothing to bring the game to 27 21 so three unanswered touchdowns Jerry Judy had two of them then Marlon Mack I forgot he was even on the Broncos had a 66 yard touchdown but then, of course, late third quarter, 
Mahomes found Juju for a four-yard touchdown. Then Russell Wilson got hurt in the early fourth quarter, so he was going for a, actually going for a touchdown, basically. He already got the first down, but he was going for the end zone. He took a pretty nasty hit. His head got smashed into the ground. He definitely did not look good. He was done for the rest of the day. Brett Rippon came in. He threw a touchdown to Jerry Judy, his third of the game, actually, so Judy with a, a great game in this one. But, um, yeah, the Chiefs did hold on to win this one by um, six points, but it definitely got close. So, I mean, the Chiefs now are 10-3. and three. Yeah, they probably took their foot off the gas pedal and Mahomes had a pretty awful second half I think he threw three interceptions in the second half it was pretty rough but Russell Wilson actually did not look that bad I mean he did did have the interception but it was a great play by Willie Gay as I mentioned but Russell Wilson 247 yards three touchdowns I mean he did take six sacks which is crazy but um yeah maybe he's moving in the right direction I don't know I, I still think that uh, Nathaniel Hackett's a one and done coach this year I don't see him coming back but Maybe Russell Wilson can bounce back next year. I don't know, but Broncos fans better hope so. Next, the Panthers were at the Seahawks, and the Panthers actually win. As a Giants fan, I love that because they're in competition with the Seahawks for that uh, wild card spot or one of those wild card spots. So definitely a big shout out to the Panthers for taking this one home. So, uh, yeah, Sam Darnold actually looks kind of good. You know, I'm not saying he's the future of this team, but Sam Darnold statistics wise wasn't amazing he only had 24 pass attempts 120 yards one touchdown but just a game manager type game and he did uh, navigate the pocket pretty well for the most part so i'll give him credit geno smith you know geno i guess overall had he did have three touchdowns 264 passing yards but two interceptions i think he threw a pick on like the first throw of the game too um also had a late one to jc horn who made a great break on the ball on a comeback route to DK Metcalf. But yeah, it was a quick 17-0 lead for the Panthers. And then, of course, the uh, Seahawks started to make a comeback. They found Tyler Lockett on one of those great catches by Lockett where he has, like, awesome footwork. He somehow kept his feet in bounds when he probably shouldn't have. Um, Geno found Metcalf before halftime for a touchdown. Then in the second half, I mean, it was pretty much the Panthers. They scored a touchdown to go up 27-17, then a field goal to go up 30-17. And Seattle got a garbage time touchdown to Marquise Goodwin. As I said, if you're Seattle, that is a pretty rough loss. And if they won that game, they would have been in a very good spot to make the playoffs. Seattle plays on Thursday versus the Niners. And I kind of like Seattle in that game. Like, I feel like people are going to look at the Niners just dominating the Buccaneers, who are actually not that good, um, and just, like, want to bet on the Niners. And it's only three and a half. I just have a funny feeling that Seattle might stay in that game and possibly win it, but we'll see. Um, but Seattle's also playing at KC. They're home versus the Jets. Then they play home versus the Rams to close out the year. So their next three games are tough. The Niners, the Chiefs, and the Jets. So we'll find out what happens there with the Seahawks. But after a great start, there is a chance Seattle does miss the playoffs. If you're the Panthers, I mean, hell, you have a chance as well. I mean, looking at this division right now, the NFC South, which is god-awful, the Bucks are six and seven in first place, who we'll get to next, I believe. But the Panthers are five and eight. I mean, they're right there. So I mean, you never know. I mean, I'm trying to think. Do they play each other again? I don't think so. Oh, they do. Wow. And and they won the first game versus Tampa. It was that weird 21-3 game. I actually lost Survivor on that. So yeah, thanks, Bucks. Um. So yeah, I mean, look, you never know. I mean, the Panthers might pull it off. Sammy D and the boys, he might get them to the playoffs somehow. That'd be pretty crazy. Sunday night football, it was the big Tua versus Herbert matchup, and Herbert, he won this one 23-17. Definitely not the best game for Miami. They just never really got things going. Tua was pretty much pressured a lot in this game. Only sacked two times, but it felt like he was pressured a lot in this game, and they definitely got him out of the pocket. Herbert, though, he did have 51 pass attempts, which obviously will inflate your stats, but 39 to 51, that's very good. 367 yards, one touchdown. One of the craziest plays I ever saw happen in this game, like I've been watching football for a while now, and there was a play where Jeff Wilson fumbled, the uh, running back for the Dolphins, and there was a pile for the fumble, and somehow the fumble got kicked out, and there was Tyreek Hill waiting for it. He gets the ball, everyone thinks the ball is still under the pile, and Tyreek Hill runs like 60 yards down the field for a touchdown, and these people are still fighting for the ball that they think is in the pile. And It was like, I've never seen something like that. Like, the ball usually does not pop out when there's a giant pile of like seven dudes on the field just over a ball. I don't know how it happened, but it was pretty insane. So one of those plays I would definitely recommend going back to watch. But Herbert, he made some big-time throws, he made some big-time plays, they definitely got Mike Williams back involved, who came 
came back for the first time in a while with the, uh, you know, he re-injured that same ankle a few weeks back. Keenan Allen had 12 catches, 92 yards. I mean, they were moving the ball. So, I mean, the Chargers, they looked pretty good offensively. They, of course, have to keep winning games. They're 7-6. and six. The Dolphins are now 8-5. and five. Miami finishes up with at Buffalo, home versus Green Bay, at New England, home versus the Jets. That game at Buffalo will be tough for them next week, but definitely big for uh, the division if they want to have any chance of winning it. For the Chargers, they have the Titans at home next week, and they've been struggling, so you could win that. At the Colts, of course, they can win that. Home versus the Rams, they could win that. And at the Broncos, of course, they can win that. So yeah, the Chargers have a very favorable schedule, but you can never trust the Chargers. Something is always bound to go wrong with that team, so you never know. But if you're in Miami, I mean, you'll probably still make the playoffs. I think the AFC East East might be a bit out of reach, especially if they lose next week. That's pretty much it. But um, they just got to get in healthy because they've had some issues with like Tua's health and Tyree Kill banged up his ankle in this game. Jalen Waddle got banged up a couple weeks ago. So you got to get those three guys healthy, get in the playoffs, and hopefully they play on, you know, not outdoors in a very cold environment because that's a team right there that's built to play indoors or in better weather. You don't want to have Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle playing in like 10 degree weather. So hopefully the schedule for the Dolphins sake lines up pretty well for them. Anyway, that's going to do it. I'm not going to finish watching this game. It's in the third quarter right now, and the Patriots are still up 20 to 13. So it might be a good finish, but I would assume Actually, I don't want to assume. I I think the Cardinals could come back and win, but of course the odds are in the Patriots' favor right now. Adam Schefter did just tweet, Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray is scheduled to undergo further testing on his knee Tuesday, but as one source said tonight, it does not look good. So yeah, I mean, it would not surprise me if we get some pretty bad news about Kyler next week, and it sucks. Kyler's one of the most fun players to watch in the league, and um, you just don't want to see that for anybody. But as I said, luckily he did sign the extension, so at least he got that going for him. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll do this next week, and I'll talk to you guys next time.